So today we're looking at the Philips all-in-one multi-cooker, which is a multi-cooker. It's a pressure cooker, it's a slow cooker, it's a stewing machine, it's a yogurt maker, it's a steamer, it's a rice cooker, it's a risotto maker, it's so many different things. Many, many, many more things can be cooked in this machine. Today we're going to be looking at cooking pulled pork. Now, pulled meats um, are very big on the menu list everywhere at the moment, particularly here in Australia, and of course they always have been. Uh, in, in America, they're a big, big popular menu item. So getting the pork ready, or whether it was beef or, or even lamb or pulled chicken, um, is as easy as starting off by browning up, popping a little bit of oil in there and browning up something like some onion and some garlic and some, some, some herbs and things that are going to create a big flavour base. So I've got some leek and a little bit of thyme which I'm going to sauté on the high heat for a couple of minutes now. So you can hear that sizzling away. So. What I did with the menu selection was press the sauté high heat temperature and press the start button over there. I'm going to mix this through until it just starts caramelising. So those flavours are just starting to come through. And then of course I'm going to add the pork. Now this is a rather large cut of pork with the bone in. So when you're buying your cuts of meat, um, the cheaper cuts of meat so to speak are generally the best for slow cooking. Now. Slow cooking meat tenderizes the meat in such a way that no other form of cooking except for pressure cooking can actually achieve. So the meats that we're cooking have a lot of striated muscle and tendons, meaning that type of cut, if you fried it, the meat would all shrink up, it would be leathery and it would be rubbery and you really would have a real struggle trying to eat it. So what slow cooking does is it melts away the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, and all of those things that are the connective tissue that end up being the essence of the sauce itself. So once they've melted away through that slow cooking process, the meat then becomes pull apart, which is the pulled pork, the pulled beef, or the pulled lamb, which you can have in sandwiches, on little slider buns, you can be having it as a roast style, you know, brisket um, with vegetables in stews, um, and you end up with a beautiful base that you can use for a casserole, a soup, or turn it into a sauce after it's actually cooked. So, I have almost three kilos of pork shoulder with the bone in. So I'm gonna marinate it now with this smoky hickory barbecue sauce with a little bit of paprika. You can use any type of marinade that you like, but you really need very little to no liquid for pulled type meat. So we don't need to add liquid to make it all soft. It will naturally happen with this excellent cooking procedure. So get the meat and you can either baste it in a mixing bowl or you can baste it straight here in the cooking bowl itself. And you just need to be quite liberal in spreading that over the entire cut of the meat and placing the cut of meat straight into that bowl. So it's quite heavy, you'll need a good strong pair of tongs because it's a very large cut of meat. So I'm going to pop that straight in there, you can hear that sizzling and searing away starting the cooking process, all those flavours I can just about taste, I can certainly smell them. With the lid I'm going to pop that on there now. I'm going to make sure that the seal is on because we're slow cooking. So seal, you've got bake, seal and vent. Seal. I'm going to cancel that sauté and I'm going to pick slow cook, high temp and I'm going to increase the cooking time to 12 hours and press start. It's that simple. So that will cook safely and beautifully for that 12 hour process. When you choose a function, there's an automatic default time and temperature setting. So had I increased the time to 12 hours, it would have automatically went to the six hour and six hours is absolutely long enough for a pulled pork, a lamb, a chicken or, or, or beef. It is long enough, but 12 hours just makes it even more tender. So I've chosen the 12 hours. I've actually prepared one uh, that's been cooking overnight that's just ready. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you what the end result is because we can't sit here watching this for 12 hours. So we'll leave that one aside and I'll bring in my one that's been cooking. This is the end result. So this just came out of the slow cooker before we put the new batch in. 
It was slow cooked for 12 hours. It was the exact same cut of meat and it is absolutely melt in your mouth and pull apart just beautiful. So if we have a look at the meat, you certainly don't need a carving knife. You can see all of that muscle and tendon has melted away and become the essence of the sauce itself. So that's the meat, tender and beautiful and ready to eat. This is the excess liquid. So this is all of the liquid that's been produced from that cut of meat. So the tendons and the muscles and everything that's melted away has become the essence. Of course, there's some leak in there and a little sprig of thyme um, and, and the sauce, the basting sauce. But this liquid can be the base of a casserole. It could be used as a jus over the, the meat itself. You can actually thicken it up to make a really nice sauce or gravy by adding some gluten-free thickeners. So you can be using corn flour, you can be using this easy to find xanthium gum. So you can find this in supermarkets and health food stores. So xanthan gum, um, and it's roughly about the same amount that you'd use for corn flour as the gum. So you'd use about two tablespoons to start off with, mix it in a little bowl with a little teaspoon of water to turn into a paste, stir it through that sauce and it will instantly thick it up into a really nice thick gravy style sauce. So whether it's pressure cooking or slow cooking, both forms of cooking, usually you end up with quite a large lot of liquid from the meats that you've cooked. So if you like that really nice, thin, liquidy sauce, that's perfect. But if you want to thicken it up, you will need thickening agents. So with every recipe in the Phillips recipe book that you get with the all-in-one cooker, or whether it's a recipe you get from elsewhere, add the thickening agents as you need to. So, if that was supposed to be a gravy, again, you'd use either of those two. If you're making a soup and you need it a little bit thicker, add those into the liquid once the cooking process has finished. So thicken it up bit by bit. I'd recommend a couple of teaspoons to begin with, tablespoon at max, and then see how it is because you don't want it to turn into cement. So thicken it up slowly until you get the consistency that you like, and then everybody's happy.